TV. Welcome everybody at this new episode of Playgrounds TV. And we have a very special guest. I know him quite, I know him I think for more than 10 years. He was like one of the first visitors of Playgrounds edition in Amsterdam. He made like quite an astonishing career working as a freelancer first, then at Ambassadors, and now he is the executive uh, creative director of Buck Amsterdam. And may I have a welcome applause for Vincent. Vincent, welcome in our studio. Thank you, thank and you. And it's, it's really an honor to have you in this online environment. Um, now, I was, you were on my wish list for a long time to welcome you here and to uh, ask you everything in this in-depth interview. Let's go for it. Don't worry, it's not going to be that personal, but we really want to know more about your creative process, about your career, how you set things up, what you think is important as a director. Um, but first, we're going to start uh, with the question, why did you go to the Art Academy? Why did I go to the Art Academy? Um, I never really set out to go to the Art Academy. I always was involved in the arts in primary school and in high school, um, drawing, uh, music, drama, all those kind of things, arts and crafts. And I almost went into theater school, and then I ended up in sort of an orientation week for the theater school in Amsterdam, and it didn't really feel like me. It wasn't really working for me. Um, so I sort of took half a year off and then applied for art school and first it was fine arts. I got accepted for fine arts, then I moved, I shifted to film and I shifted to interactive media and I think after a year and a half I ended up in the basement room 010 um, of the Willem de Koning uh, in Rotterdam in animation and that was everything. It was amazing because it combined everything I liked about the arts. Animation is about movement, it's about music, it's about rhythm, it's about acting, it's about composition, it's about design, performance. It just combined all the arts. So all disciplines came together in that one. Absolutely. Uh, all right, so you actually ex you discovered animation. I discovered animation. You never were influenced by it. No, I loved it. But it wasn't as a little kid or in, in high school that I was like, oh, I'm going to study animation or become a director. And even for me, animation first, I never really had the idea to, oh, I want to have a studio or I want to become a director. It was all sort of, oh, I really like animation and discovered uh, CG and loved shading and lighting and rendering. So I thought, oh, I'm going to be a shading lighting artist and I love look development. Um, then sort of discovered After Effects and I was like, oh, but this actually also works very nice and started doing motion design. So it always sort of, there never really was a plan. I never really set out to achieve something. It's sort of just always discovery after discovery. Really organical process. Yeah. All right, we're gonna watch to some earlier work. It's a show oh reel of 2011. So it's been 10 <laughs> years ago, approximately. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more further about your time at the William the King Academy? Yeah, <laughs> William the Kuning. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually, because he moved, he never finished uh, the, the Academy. Um, I actually lobbied sort of very <laughs> under the radar because uh, Fiep Westerdorp, famous Dutch illustrator, yeah, yeah. she finished the uh, Willem de Koning Academy in Rotterdam. But uh, Willem never finished it. So he went to New York and got all famous. And that's and why they famous. took his name. Yeah. And that's, that's how it works in the Netherlands. That's how it works in the Netherlands. Yeah. We're gonna watch the show reel. Then stopped, but oh it's wow. uh, yeah, yeah. It was like quite <laughs> absurd because your career didn't stop. It then. didn't stop. Oh, this is Made not the ending. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it went with then it stopped, but it gave a good impression. It's a glitch. And okay. there was a and there was an interesting thing in it that you're doing, and that's like this clip. It's like five seconds of yeah. storytelling, and I yeah. saw some excerpts of it in your show reel. 
Was this something that you discovered at the Art Academy that you were trying to do, or what's the purpose of five seconds of storytelling? It was uh, both, actually. So what happened was in 2009, I got an internship at Ambassadors. I had to intern um, uh, for school, and I got an internship at Ambassadors. And I stuck around to get a full-time job after, but I also still had to graduate. It took me two years to graduate. Um, <laughs> Sounds familiar, sounds familiar, sounds familiar. I'll, not, familiar, I'll familiar. not give you the whole story, but you're a teacher, you know these yeah, kind yeah. of situations. Um, and suddenly at Ambassadors, I had a render farm and sort of a machine that was 10 times faster than the laptop I always was using in art school or the computers at art school. And I just wanted to try a bunch of different stuff. And one of the pitfalls for me in art school was I never finished anything. Um, that was one of the dangers also for me in animation because I had all these bigger ideas and stories, like the little robot in my real, uh, my graduation film, I don't think I've ever showed it to anyone except during the presentation for my graduation because I wasn't happy with it. But I always had these ideas and never finished anything and then I was like, okay, I need to give myself boundaries and start finishing things because there's a, it's nice to finish things and then you can move on to other things. Um, so I sort of, created a jar with all these words and things and said, I can, I'm going to make five second stories. So I created the logo for it and uh, just I had road trip in space, forest, all these kind of silly things. And I just designed and made anything and I tried to do different styles every time, tried to learn different techniques. There's like some CG in here and some design and did some After Effects. We have just another one, we can charge one. So this was the first one. All right, this was the first one. The other one you yeah. made, uh, all right. Later, this, I think I made like 10 in total or something, or a bit more. Um, and one of the nice things also was, is when I interned at Ambassadors, um, there was another intern in the music team called uh, Joop Meiberg. And I, we both sort of found ourselves suddenly working in advertising and commercials when he was a, a singer songwriter and musician, so was used to longer pieces of music, and I sort of had all these ideas I never finished. Um, so we both sort of tasked ourselves with the challenge, and he made all the music for all my five second projects, and that's sort of how we became great friends. And for him, it was an, a perfect exercise to suddenly create music pieces that were only five seconds long to sort of train in that because that's what's needed in advertising. And for me, I could try a lot of different things and learn new things and finish something for change. But it's an important thing to finish things because I yeah. see it like a lot happening in the art academy that students don't finish it because animation is quite a painful, sometimes time-consuming execution. So if you work on it for like six months, sometimes somebody's got distracted by it. So making like small pieces of five seconds, but actually making the whole loop. So from concept to yeah. final execution and making the post-production of music, at, there you learn a lot from, right? Yeah. So finishing, even though you rather can make like smaller projects instead of huge ambitious ones, yeah. but then finish the small ones and do a lot of them. Because yeah. you can... Um, Especially as, as a student, like in art school or after, if you're sort of trying to get into the industry or, or breaking into a studio, is just do a lot of different things, but, but finish them and sort of close that off for yourselves. And it also shows a lot. It's like everyone can, can do a lot of different sketches or everyone can have a lot of different ideas, but actually seeing them through and committing to them and getting them over the finish line, it says a lot about a person in, uh, in different ways. And, and don't, like also I told this, I, I gave a lot of guest lectures at art schools. And one of the things I always say to the graduation students is like at that moment, your graduation film is the most important thing you're making. And by no means, it will be the best thing you ever make. I hope it's not the best thing you'll ever make, because that's a shame. Yeah. But also, it's, it's, sort of, it's, it's about the process and getting it over the finish line instead of sort of completely losing yourself in that. Hey, and during your work time at school, at the, yeah. at the Art Academy, you did an internship at Buck, am I right? So this was an interesting story. I <laughs> got an internship at Ambassadors in 2009. Um, and then out of the blue, when I was, I think after that internship, Jeremy Shalman, who was an art director, or no, associate creative director at Buck, sent me an email um, that he saw my work on Vimeo and was like, do you want to come over for a juniorship or internship? And I remember I was in the bathroom on the toilet at the time when I read that email. And nice detail, <laughs> nice detail. <laughs> and I was completely blown away because Buck was a studio I was always sort of, looked at and they were doing incredible stuff back then already um, and I just sort of 
uh, got my job at Ambassadors. I was still trying to graduate because I sort of had to finish that too for myself, even though I had a job already. Um, so I sort of said, I can't really make it work right now. And then I graduated in 2011. And I was like, well, I'm going to email him again and see sort of if they're still up for it. And then they were. And he remembered and he was like, no, absolutely, come over. And then because I had just graduated, it was easy for me to get a visa because you can get sort of a J1 student visa. So I got to go to LA for six months. For six months. Let's watch a little clip uh, in which you participated yes. during your internship. When one hand turns off one light at home or at work, becomes two hands turning lights off, becomes 10 hands turning the AC to 78 or higher, becomes a community, not using appliances until after 6 p.m., we've just made sure there'll be plenty of energy to go around, even in a heat wave. Because when state officials call a flex alert, the power is in all our hands. Yeah, and then you come from a Dutch industry, creative industry, mm -hmm. from Dutch education, and you come to one of the leading animation studios now, but also during that time already. So they were quite like known mm -hmm. by their wonderful storytelling and design. So what kind of box opened for you when you were in LA? It was absolutely amazing. Uh, apart from the weather and the space in LA, which is really nice. Um, it's also the, the, the mindset of, of back in that studio. A lot of the people I met back then and learned a lot from back then are still there and I'm working with again. Um, but also collaboration and how open it was. And for me, it was very clear. I was going to be in LA for six months, so I was going to make it the best I could possibly make it. And I was there for an internship and to learn. So I also, back then, sort of on Twitter and on Tumblr, people I was following who I liked and worked at studios, I emailed everyone. I was like, hey, I'm an, uh, a student from the Netherlands and I'm interning at Buck for six months. Do you want to grab a coffee? And I, I got to visit DreamWorks, Disney, Pixar, Blur, PSYOP, like all these studios. Everyone was incredibly nice and sort of made friends I'm still in contact with and, and, and still catch up with. And um, I had a coffee with uh, and visited the uh, studio of John Klasse, one of my favorite uh, illustrators. And it, it's just, it was an incredible six months. We learned so much. What did you learn? What is like the, the most, yeah, I would say learning curve, uh, probably very steep, but what is like the things that you say, okay, I really got that during my Buck internship? Well, for me, and that's something also like why I didn't finish things, is for me, animation is about collaboration. It's really the magical thing that you put a lot of different people together who can put their brains and their hearts into something. And learning from other people and sort of being better together. And so I, I learned on the one hand so many technical things, but on the other hand also working in a team, presenting things to art directors or creative directors and also bluffing, like I worked on a few, I, I did a lot of different things, so I did some design projects, like on this one I designed and did 2D animation, After Effects, also did uh, CG look development, and they asked me at a certain point if I knew shave and a haircut, because they needed to have grooms for a few characters. And I said, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I stayed up all night doing tutorials for shave and a haircut, so the next day I sort of knew what I was doing. Um, and then together with another intern, uh, Alex Dingfielder, who's still there, who's a CG supervisor now um, at Buck LA. We did almost all the, uh, the grooms for the characters and look devs for, for uh, that project. So it's, it's a little bit bluffing. Um, and it's also, it's, it is hard work, but it is like make it, make it fun. Um, put something of yourself in there and, and, and don't be a dick. No <laughs> one has a, re no one deserves or no one should be an asshole. What do you think make Buck Buck when you were in the internship there? You said, okay, this, this really great space and this incredible pool of talents that are living there in the square kilometers, but also like regarding storytelling. What do you say, okay, this is what they really it's it's are brilliant in? It's heart. Um, it's, it's really like thanks to the founders, uh, Ryan Honey and Orion Tate and Jeff, the, there's no... And it sounds super cheesy, and I know it, it sounds cheesy, but I'm experiencing it again right now, but there's no egos. Everyone is sort of in that collaborative spirit, and people look for putting something of themselves in there. Is For me also, what I've learned, not even only at Buck, but in, in general over my career, when you work in 
applied creativity or advertising or the commercial industry is not every job is going to be amazing or is going to change the world. And there are some jobs I've also said no to because I didn't want to do them. But finding your fun and finding your sort of moment in, in, in okay, maybe this is not about a beautiful design, but maybe it's about beautiful movement. So like find that thing and make your world as big as you can control the quality. So then polish those keyframes and make every movement incredible. So it, it's it's very much about that and, and, and find something that you can put something of yourself in there. And sometimes it's very big and sometimes it's very small, but at least give yourself a reason to do the project. All right. We're going to watch another one in which you are involved. Was this the grooming one? <laughs> the, um, <laughs> no, this was not the grooming one. The other grooming, one, yeah, yeah. the Keebler was the grooming one. No, for this one I did the textures, I did some 2D animations, I did some designs. Also, look, Dev, I did the skin shader of the, the, the naked guy in the middle. Um, no, this one taught me Joe Mullen, was uh, uh, the art director, creative director on this one. And he's still at Buck. He, he was at Playgrounds, I think. He was, he was one of our artists that yeah. visited Playgrounds. He did an artist talk, I think, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible, incredible man. Um, and a nice one. Very nice and person nice also, one. that yeah. helps so yeah. much. No, and, and talented. And um, what he also showed me, and if a lot of the artists said, Buck, is that it's, it's, we're going to get to that quality no matter what. And I remembered the last day before delivery, like all of us were going through this piece frame by frame to sort of paint, fix, and sort of push the quality up until the last moment. And everyone is, is involved and is sort of like we're making this piece the best we can possibly make it. And, it, and, it, and it's, I think, one of the um, buck is like excellent in, it's like this fluidity. Yeah. It's so fluent, like how they tell the story, how they, how do you say, how they, how they embed everything into this, this in, in, in this composition. Also the animation, I think they are like responsible for the term liquid animation, <laughs> uh, that everything like blends together so perfectly. Is that like one of their key things that they are like mastering as the very best? It's, it's no one ever really sets out to, to make something that has an impact like that. But it is, again, because of that atmosphere we, we try to create is when a brief comes in or a job starts and you have a, a group of such dense talent and so many talented people and they start drawing or start thinking, the weirdest stuff comes out and it all gets sort of connected to each other. And that's when, when we get a project, we always try to sort of play and explore what could we turn this into? What can we make this look like? What can we do that we haven't done before? And just start drawing it out and playing around with it. And because everyone is chipping in, um, it, it, it just builds on each other and becomes this transformer of sort of things on top of each other. And at the end, because also of the creative leadership and everyone cares about the same thing, everyone has that sort of clear direction, it, it looks like it's, it doesn't look mashed together. It feels very much like one language. Yeah. And it's very much because of the culture and the, the, the principles within Buck that, that we care about. Yeah. Hey, and we're still talking about your time at the Art Academy? Yes. Uh, so this is your internship <laughs> at Buck, and this I was when yeah, you were still as a student. So from the basement of the Willem de Koenig, uh, uh, without a clue about animation, but yeah. got involved in the Art Academy into animation. And as I can see it now, took it quite seriously. Uh, <laughs> because like 3D, 2D, little story experiments, had some troubling with finishing it. Yeah. Also, during the Art Academy, already started at the Ambassadors. Yeah. So, internship at Buck ended. Yeah. You came back to the Netherlands. Yeah. And then straight back to... Straight back to Ambassadors. ambassadors. And yeah. And then this really interesting project also showed up. Yeah. And let's watch this that you created at uh, the Ambassadors. This is the tale of the PVC horse. She fell in love. He was strong, but had his soft sides too. What a cute tip, she thought. But their love had no future. Just like our love of plastic, 
because it will take forever to decompose, unless we dispose of disposables altogether. So the little seahorse can find her true love. Choose a bank that strives for a cleaner environment, so money can create happiness. ASN Bank. Yeah, this is of course part of the whole A ASN, F ASN Bank campaign, which you were also really famous by the, uh, what was the career? The, the Creature of Habit was the first the one. The Creature of Habit, that's yeah. the first and one. And the Shady yeah. Bug. No, it's, it's, it, it's it, I think it's a few years ago we did Creature of Habit. Yeah. It's an incredible campaign. It was so much fun to, to work on that. And so many great people worked on it. I think also the designs, uh, uh, in particular on this one, uh, Maureen van der Hout, Rachelle Slingerland, uh, uh, Nick Groeneveld on animation, art direction. It's just an incredible team of people. Um, and it's, it's just, when I got back, sort of jumping back into that, sort of I got back from Buck and I was inspired by the collaboration and design and animation, and that wasn't something that necessarily was that manifested yet in, in the Netherlands on that level. Um, and I got the chance to build that out within Amsterdam, or sort of took the chance to build that out in Amsterdam. Yeah, because it started quite small in Ambassadors, right? So the animation department wasn't that big when... It wasn't there when I started. Yeah, you, you actually started that department. Yeah, it was visual effects, um, grading, editing, very much sort of anchored in post-production, but all the people who were there could also work on, on animation or other projects, and there were people within the company who also had those, those ambitions. They're like, yeah, let's try it, let's do it. Well, what's the first thing that you did? When you say, okay, Vincent, you are like a talented animator. Uh, we want to have an animation department, so, but how are you created it's a department? So what was the first steps that you did? Again, there wasn't really a plan. All I right. just sort That's of, <laughs> no, it's like, it, I came back and I s continued doing my five second stories. I continued sort of, personal projects, together with Youp, uh, we made a video that we like espresso, uh, I made a video about a little hill, um, and then kept sort of pushing, like how can we do these animation projects? And then you sort of get to know people at ad agencies and, and directors and other people who will come all over um, to visit the studio to do certain projects, and they sort of start to get to know you or people within ambassadors of like, oh, the animation. Oh, you guys can do that too. Yeah, we can do that. It's like, oh, you can do that too. Bluff. Yeah, Again, we can do that too. Yeah, sure. And then uh, it, a few sort of really small projects and we started doing that. And then um, together with the same agency that we did ASN Bank with, we did the Mona campaign yeah. for Shuck and Shores. And that was sort of my first being in the director's chair, um, figuring that out with the team and that just, there was another one we did then, another one, and always for me what I like is it had this tactile quality, like we tried to mimic clay looks um, for, the, for those characters. And yeah, when you do one, you do another one, you do another one, and you start making more and more, and it just kept on growing and growing. And we got to hire a designer, we got to build out a team, hire another animator, hire another person, and slowly sort of built this team of artists that could take on animations. But the, the nice thing about that group of people also was is we worked in live action together too, or we did visual effects together too. And because uh, Youp and the music team was there, we collaborated closely with different types of disciplines. So again, learned an incredible amount and just from learning from other people. But there was never really a plan that I, I came back from Buck and was like, I want to start an animation company or I want to start an animation department. It's like, no, I just started working again. And I think if I could give one advice is to anyone who wants to sort of don't plan it out to try to achieve it, just do very well what's right in front of you and that will lead to something else. That's what it was for me, is I just tried to do my job very well. And then if I thought, like, oh, maybe I could push this. I tried to push it and then sort of kept on going more and more. Right. In the Mona commercial, you also use the combination of like clay, yeah. CG, like this combination of uh, the real world and the CGI uh, addition to it. Um, yeah, here you also see this. Uh, this is like, I think th uh, this is the, the shady making bug. off the shady bug. Yeah. So you can also see how you did that.
You actually you really see the love for details in this, right? It's it, yeah. It was just so much fun, and I always like in art school. I already wanted to start combining practical. There's there's a short film I never finished, which I sort of I built a, a living room set for. I had this idea, and uh, th then it just it never finished it. Um, but always had this idea, and for ASN. Like also moving into sort of that creative director role, I started to understand a little bit more how the commercial and advertising world worked and how you could present things or create treatments and, and, and have a little bit more control over creativity in collaboration with an agency. And for ASN Bank, it made a lot of sense to try and do it in miniatures because reading about the brand and everything they stood for, it felt weird making a quote-unquote fake or CG commercial for them. So I really wanted to push and see if we could do it in miniature. Um, and also something we had never done before. And we shot it at like a really small stage. We made a lot of it uh, ourselves uh, together with Gotz, uh, the set designer. And it, it just worked so well and it combined so many of the crafts we like. And, and, and you get so much more like making it real, the real lighting, looking through a real camera lens is just something extra and special. It's more authentic. It's, it's just, it's something human. It's really, it's something special. Is that also the love of craft you have so deeply? I think so, if you say so. <laughs> I, 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 but I, think, I just really... I think so, because you're like a qu quite somebody who's like, uh, how you say, uh, shouting out how much craft is needed in the industry. And Absolutely. The advertisement uh, industry. And well, I think that, that there's the... the, the Advertising industry is an in interesting industry, and, and there's a lot of sort of people claiming they do certain things because there's so many people involved. And I, I believe in the power of makers, and I believe in the com combination of, of craft driven by creativity or the other way around. And that's something that within Buck also we're constantly sort of pushing for. We're thinkers, we're makers, we're not just a production company, we're not just an animation studio, we also do branding design, we do immersive, it's everything. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, making something, anyone can have a, have a great idea, but actually seeing it through, again, sort of finishing it and seeing it through and being able to translate that into something where everything, and that's what I love about animation, every pixel, every stroke can be put in service of the communication of that idea or, of, or that emotion. And it's, it's something beautiful when that works. Fun fact about the first ASN bank, Again, sort of how the zeitgeist of me and uh, Ryan Honey or the team at Buck in LA was weirdly in sync is when we were doing miniatures uh, for the first time on that scale for ASN Bank. At the very same time, they were doing the Tinder campaign. Oh, we're going to watch it later on. Also interview. with miniatures. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember talking to him and because uh, we always stayed in touch. Like after, my, uh, after I left, we always stayed in touch. I was like, oh, we're doing a thing with miniatures and this and that. And he's like, huh, funny, we're here too. <laughs> it's like just back and forth. So it's, it's, it's weird how we always stayed in sync. Yeah, I, was, I did once an interview, and they were also guests at Playgrounds, I think, in 2010, already a long time ago. They were the Daniels. Yeah. Maybe you know them, Daniel Scheinert and Daniel Kwam. Uh, they were later the directors Swiss of Army Swiss Man. Army. Yeah, uh, they, they, they were the directors of that film, but they did also a lot of commercials back yeah. then. And they also said, like, you have to enjoy the process, yeah. because when you are like sitting behind your computer screen all the time, it's less fun then actually also create it with something real, like authentic, like sets and combining stuff. That's much more challenging than just create everything in a computer. Is that yeah. also one maybe tiny reason why you also try to make an interesting process behind it to also challenge yourself a little bit more? Absolutely. Just trying something new. Um, the, 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 the thing, it's... The, there's a few things I love about CG animation, is the details you get, the details you get in animation, um, especially facial, facial expressions and sort of those kind of things. Sets rarely look very good to me. Um, and there's a few reasons for that, and they, sometimes they try to be re uh, realistic. There's a few different process or thought processes behind that. And it's also a lot of work to make a proper set. And you can do matte paintings, but that also influences the process in a certain way. And then, to me, nature is a beautiful thing. And if you can shoot that and get the forest and get the lighting and get those lenses and, and shoot it through that way, you get everything out of that that's amazing. And then you get, from CG animation, you also get everything that works. So to me, it made a lot of sense in trying to combine that. Um, 
it, it, it sounds a lot more articulate and thought through as I'm saying it now than I did at the moment. I thought it would be really cool and it would make so much sense because also that was in the days that I in art school never finished anything. And I was like, oh my God, I need to make at least sort of sculpting it or putting it together. I used to be into miniatures also. I had a, a brief stint working in a games workshop and painted miniatures. So that for me is also a thing of building those things. All right. Yeah, here you, you see like a, a little bit of the turntables. You actually also see the really nice details. Like yeah, the teams are incredible. The, work the right. fabric and uh, the way it was all attached. It's, it's, uh, and this is from... And this is, that's another one that we're now yeah. going to watch. It's um, also one that is quite famous uh, <laughs> and has like everything combined that you, in, in yeah. knowledge that you, that you actually achieve by doing the... ASN, the Mona, it all comes together, those skills, into, both I think, the Unox, Unox uh, video. I think both technically and creatively also. For us at Ambassadors, we were also at a point where we were sort of discovering what we needed to create things. And I was discovering with like what kind of people worked and how to work the process. And actually, at that point, we also hired a creative and uh, creative writer, lead creative writer, and she was involved in collaborating with the agency, rewriting the story, developing the characters, and that allowed us to give so much depth to this and have these kind of conversations. And, and we could have conversations about technology and how we're going to approach it. We could have conversations about design and sort of try seeing how we can push this visually and then also emotionally and creatively. And, and that combining those things and, and bringing that into the studio was one of the best things we could have done because then it, it it really becomes about capturing that emotion and putting every frame and everything you are going to make into a reasoning to sort of capture that and, and translate that. All right. So this was, uh, in many ways, a next step. <laughs> it's almost emotional, right? You it see how things are coming together in this way, right? Yeah, the, the whole process in this project was incredible. The whole team and, and, and having that sort of creative thinking, making that connection with the agency and the, 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 the Asla, the lead creative writer, and then the whole team, uh, Rochella, uh, Marain again, Nick, everyone, the designers, animators, just pushing for capturing those feelings. It was It was a very sort of beautiful in sync moment. Also with the music, we at the end pushed very hard um, to change the end tune. The Unox end tune is a very iconic thing. Um, and the whole story is is that the 
the dad is a butcher and the daughter uh, secretly buys a vegetarian sausage and switches them around and he sees the packaging so he knows but he doesn't say anything and we all the looks and we have so many conversations about how to edit that together and the first two three notes of the song are sort of in doubt because he takes a bite and sort of doubtfully the, the mouth harp, and then we cut back almost as a western of like close up to close up to close up, and then he gives a wink, and then sort of the rest comes in, and it's like it all fitted together. Just tiny little things like that. Yeah, you were already. We started this uh, this dis discussion. It's not a discussion. <laughs> it's an interview. Um, but you're saying that like w within the basement of the Willem de Kooning, <laughs> uh, there that all the disciplines comes together. That's what you are. Yeah. That you really loved, and actually, this is one of the. I think master proofs about like how things can come together in the best possible way. Absolutely. My question is, how do you bring this together? Because I think it's quite difficult for you as a creative director and the director of this spot and also like really have a good eye about like how the art should come together. How do you make that happen? How are you sure that everything is on the same page? Because it's quite easy to make something really distracted of the, that it becomes like yeah. not perfectly matching in that world. I don't know. Hairspray it, uh, and desperation. That should be like the magic, right? How it comes together. It's, it's luck. It's a lot of luck. A lot of good people. Um, right. It's There's a few things, like I said, sort of finding the fun um, in every project. And I always see my job as a director or creative director because um, I feel everyone is partially a director because um, we're all pushing for the quality of the job and collaborating to finish it. But the... Um, my job is sort of making sure that everyone who works on the film wants to work on the film. And that's something different for everyone. And on a daily basis, my conversations are about sort of algorithms for dynamics or simulations and making sure that that artist sees that that is his thing and that makes him the best thing at that. And making sure he has what he needs and he feels or she feels she can put something of herself in that project. And then zooming out again on bigger conversations of what is the story we're telling and talking to the art directors or the creative directors. What are we trying to achieve and make it about the big thing and making sure that they feel invested in that. So it's yeah. a lot of zooming in and zooming out. Yeah, because when I, yeah, you already mentioned that I'm a teacher and when there are like these group projects, uh, they always find it the most difficult thing is communication. It, so yeah. when they work together, which sometimes I, I work also work at the Master of Animation, so you work from people from different backgrounds, from different parts of the world, and then they are set together and they have to create a project by the, their, their virtual studio, to mm -hmm. say it like that. It's, they always said, what, what was your biggest learning moment? They say always communication. <laughs> how to communicate that everybody understands what you're trying to do and how to bring all those elements together. You are really successful in doing that. What's the secret of your success? You're already mentioning that you're saying, okay, everybody has an important part. Yeah. They can actually put their heart and soul into it. So it's an expertise, but you also bring a good overview. They know what that element is, how important that element is in the bigger picture. So they also understand the bigger picture. Yeah. Is that the, the way you communicate it to a big team? Because this is a team of 25, 35 people that worked on it? Yeah, yeah something around that, 20, 20 people in total. Um, yeah, I, I feel what I also always try to, like for instance for designers or when we have that, that moment, uh, right now also on projects, sort of to play and explore and try new different things, um, I've never accepted when a designer presents something or has an idea and I ask them why and they say because it looks cool. That's not good enough. So I, I always try to, for people, so for themselves, to put something behind it and give reasoning behind it for the artists and make sure that that is something that connects or we can connect to the bigger thing we're trying to do, selling hamburgers or something like that. But it is to sort of that bigger idea and latch it onto that bigger idea. So it's, it's, we're not only trying to make beautiful things, but we're trying to make beautiful things that work or solve a problem or hit touch up on an emotion. And I think it is important that every artist, to a certain extent, is aware of what we're trying to do. I think it's, it's, it's important that they feel that they're contributing to that bigger thing instead of only designing this or making this and then not caring about the rest. Yeah, because we feel connected to the little girl and the yeah. emotional aspects of being a family and that you uh, want to do the good thing um, in that commercial. That's like, you should make that as believable as possible, right? Even though it's animated, every part of that world should yeah. be 
and it it comes from real people like that um how she moves her hair uh, th 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 like everyone who was involved in both in in the creative team out of the agencies and and with our team it's we were all sort of chipping in on little ideas of what if she does this what if she does this sort of how she bites her lip how she puts her hair back and we we constantly had conversations and that's why it was so great to have a creative partner on this one to bounce those ideas around of how can we in this shot or in this scene tell this story. And we're telling the story of a little girl who isn't that comfortable in the butcher shop and then is in nature and she is comfortable. And if you look at her, there's so many different ways that we are trying to do that. For instance, she stands a lot more like this and closed off when she's in the butcher shop with her dad, who's huge, and her hair is actually sort of in front of her face. And then she's outside and she, like, the wind is in her hair, her face is open, she's more uh, up straight and looking around. So there's, there's all these tiny little things we try to do to sort of make sure we, in different ways, can tell that emotion or get that story across. All right, so every shot is a little story in itself. Yeah, or it, at least it sort of pushes the story forward or is connected to something in a certain way. All right. All right, uh, this was one of your la last projects. I, this was one of the last ones, ones that you did at yeah. the uh, Ambassadors. Yeah. And then there was, there was this huge step. <laughs> uh, we, we can say that, like uh, we already mentioned, Buck, uh, uh, you were there in, as an internship in LA. Of course, they have an office in, uh, in New York. Yeah, and Sydney. And Sydney. And now they have an office in Amsterdam. Yeah. And uh, with, <laughs> with the new executive director, creative <laughs> director just in front of me, um, how did the idea came up? How did it... Because we're in COVID times. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it's, that's quite challenging, but you take the big step towards this? It's, it, so, it feels really weird, because also being there now, we're officially sort of running uh, since January. It feels like I've been there for 10 years again already, but it's, it's, it's just so how in sync we all are. Um, but me and Ryan always stayed in touch. And like every time I would be in the US, we would meet up, or he was in Europe, we would meet up. And never again, there was a plan for me, it's like, oh, I wanna work again at Buck, or oh, this or that. And Ryan tried a few times, it's like, oh, come back to LA. I was like, no, I'm building my own thing. It's like doing this. And we, he, we sort of became soundboards for each other on, on things we cared about, things in the business we talked about, and, and both in life. Um, let's, let's watch it, Ryan, because for those who don't know, <laughs> uh, this is like a commercial that you did for, for uh, Apple, Mac? Oh, it's an edit. Apple wanted us to oh, yeah. make an expression of who we That's are right. in animation using the iMac Pro. The Buck philosophy is really about the power of collaboration. Um, we're codenaming this open brief from Apple Power. When a brief is so wide open, it, it, there's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It, it really means, oh, you can, you can do anything you want, and like you can do the coolest thing that you can think of, but then also, what's the coolest thing <laughs> that you can possibly think of? Power is an expression of Buck because it really embodies all the different skills that the people who work at Buck have. Power is based on our creative process here at Buck. The more specific story that we had chosen to tell is kind of the development of an idea. We wanted to skin the animation in a very wide range of styles with a particular artist in mind. I'm a designer. It's sort of about combining your ideas together. Outline shapes of like different features. We wanted some sort of creature, a non-human creature. Then that sort of settles down and explodes into what we're calling the eyegasm. 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 An explosion of just beautiful, just beautiful frames and just flashing and flying at you. Figuring out how to take these sort of uh, halftone even shapes and how to make those feel like a kind of uh, like a gummy bear with light shining through it and, uh, and capture that, but still keep it feeling uh, integrated in the shot. And then we're using this technique called object permanence where we 
wipe over a shape in one scene and that same shape becomes an object in the next scene. I like this sort of like mind-bending spaces and stuff like that. The idea for the table shot is basically we want to animate using cut-out wood to create this kind of like workspace desktop design. Um, yeah, which is made from like these physical pieces. We do not skimp on luxury in image making. This is going to be a way of really enjoying every pixel. We're actually trying to pack more styles into these 25 seconds than we've sometimes done in a full year. The sequence I'm working on is um, supposed to be inspired by the idea of multiverses, but it's done in sort of an illustrative style. So imagine 75 individual keyframes in 5K done by artists from Buck, you know, like Los Angeles, New York, Sydney, and a lot of international people. It's gonna be amazing. As we got close to completion, we got our friends at Anfu to write some music that really brought the whole piece together. I am very excited with where it is. Everything I've seen that's that's come off the iMac Pro has been amazing. It's gonna be powerful. <laughs> so, are your new colleagues? Beautiful, beautiful, magnificent weirdos. Love them. So, yeah. actually, this is your creative. What were you saying? A bouncing board? Yeah, soundboard. This is. Ryan and uh, Joe Mullen was in there. Uh, Steve Day was in there. Ken, it's like yeah, that, that's also why I showed this clip. So we were talking like about all these people, but now they have a face behind it and also it's a amazing. work process behind it. <laughs> what a, a process! Thought. No, it's all about the fun and embracing the weird and and doing something new. Um, but with Ryan, what were we talking about again? Oh, you asked me how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. So he <laughs> uh, back and forth. He tried me, asked me a few times, uh, "What about New York?" And I was like, "No, I'm building my own thing in, in Amsterdam and actually getting some really talented people together and figuring this out." Um, and as I did that more and more, uh, ended up becoming creative director, becoming a partner at Ambassadors. And I was sort of seeing I wanted to achieve, like, put more things into service of that that vision, of that creative vision of collaboration, of what me and Ryan were always talking about. And it felt I, I wasn't really going to be able to do that in the way I envisioned it. Um, and then Ryan again asked me, he's like, how are you doing? I was like, are you going to come over to LA already? He's like, no, no. He's like, okay, but what if we do it in Amsterdam? I was like, okay, keep talking, <laughs> maybe. And then we started having conversations about it, and I started to think about it more, and it felt like an opportunity I couldn't pass on. It was... I was 34 at the time, um, and I was at one company for 12 years, and I had two internships, and both those internships ended up being partnerships at those specific companies. Yeah, I don't good have internship, a, good internships. No, and it's, it's I, I don't have the most exciting sort of CV. I've had two jobs basically since I left art school. But a good portfolio. It's it, and I I try to sort of make it within those studios and figure that out, and it felt like. I couldn't say no to this and, and getting the opportunity to build this and, and bring those people together and really put every, like even with a project, put every person and every moment in service of our sort of vision and, and, and culture and, and creativity. Um, so we figured it out. Um, then COVID started happening and we had a lot of conversations if we were going to move forward or not. But the main reason for us to open up in Europe was about talent and being able to get the best people to work with us. Um, and it wasn't really a business sort of decision or, oh, these clients or, oh, this market is going to be really profitable for us. It's just there's a lot of people in Europe who didn't want to come over to the US or Australia and Buck really wants to work with them. So we started the studio in Amsterdam for them to be closer to home and still for us to be able to work with them. And that thinking behind it allowed us to continue in COVID because like, okay, maybe the business side of things is a bit of a mess, but it looks like the artists or the talent could maybe use a studio. They can virtually join for the moment and, and, and get together and make beautiful things. So it, it didn't really slow us down. All right. No, you had actually had the time to build it up. 
yeah. and think over it and have a good good start. Yes. Uh, let's watch like a few clips of, of Buck for those who are not familiar with the work. Absolutely. Um, we already saw a nice compilation of different stuff that uh, that they created. Uh, but I have like a huge amount of clips, so we go quite quickly through with them so that we have a good view and maybe we can, uh, we can respond to it. Okay, sure. This is already quite old. Right? Uh, the campaign is still going on, uh, but I remember seeing the first one. They still make this Sherwin clips with this yeah, color. Yeah, they still make Sherwin, Sherwin clips with the paint chips. All yeah. right, cool. That's because that was beautiful. like when I was watching uh, Stash. Yeah. Like 10 or 10 Stash years ago. Stash Media. Did you have Stash. the DVDs? I had all the DVDs. I had all the DVDs too. I, yeah. I, I Do you still have them? Yeah. I have them in a box. I just moved. They stopped making DVDs. Yeah, they stopped they making. They just have like the subscriptions now, but I have all the DVDs. Yeah. The green with the gray. Oh, There's yeah, several yeah. ones. You had silver ones with the And they had nice and booklets and always. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was back then because internet yeah. during that time wasn't that sp a quick, speed enough, that didn't have speed enough no. to actually bandwidth enough to have like a good uh, um, frame rate. So that's why you subscribed and then you got like every month or yeah. two months, no, every month. Every month. Actually, you yeah. got like uh, uh, a DVD that's in your mailbox. That's how dis I discovered so and much. That was, the r that was also the only way to discover what's happening in the advertising world. So that was quite interesting how that worked. That's how I discovered PSYOP. That's how I discovered Buck, um, Blur, the uh, uh, Gentleman's Duo, and all the incredible shorts they did. Uh, no, that uh, was Hornet. Hornet. Uh, yeah, they, they were like quite uh, yeah, ama amazing way of... It was always a treat to have those ones yeah. in my... Uh, my but now by internet and Vimeo staff <laughs> picks and everybody having their own <laughs> streaming, streaming platforms, <laughs> etc. Uh, Playgrounds like TV. Yes, I always watch Playgrounds. Yeah, of course. But there was like... Yeah, this, is a, this is actually... This is, this is the new stash this mailbox. Is it, this is what it is. <laughs> it's all happening here. It's all happening here. But like watch uh, Sherwin and then yeah. uh, it's, it's a refreshing one. Yeah, if if you watch it now, you think, okay. <laughs> At, I still like there's some transitions in there and stuff. It's just beautifully done. Yeah, and it's it's also knowing more about the people that work on it and how they work. It's just it makes so much sense. But it it was like back then. I know we we did 3D <laughs> animation. It was like what. What are they How doing? How did they do How that? did they make these great transitions? And, yeah. they, and they were like, and it still is, they are quite an inspiration for a lot yeah. to follow, right? So this kind of video clips was like an eye-opener for a lot of uh, CGI designers to actually using this kind of materials yeah. and making kaleidoscopic kind of transformations, etc. So they were really yeah. an inspiration for a lot of them. Uh, and of also, you, you know it. Um, and this is uh, what we're now going to watch. It's one from, uh, um, from Buck that they did for David Blaine, uh, the magician. Uh, and uh, I always use it for an example out for my students. Uh, there is also like, a, I, I made like assignments around it and everything. So uh, um, how, they trans how they do the transitions and how they actually make the transitions part of the storytelling. Yeah. Uh, which is quite cleverly done, and also the combination of more illustration, graphic design, um, animation, of course, uh, but so cleverly timed and blending different styles. And if you're talking limited color palettes, they know how to deal color palettes in a, in a beautiful way. Uh, let's watch it together, and I really want yeah. to hear what you like uh, about it. Amazing. He wants to thrill us. He wants to get our attention. One life and one body in which to live that life. And what if he used that body to do what we've been told is impossible? He would dazzle us. And then, of course, we think he was a fake. 
How many days can a man live without food? How long can a man live without air? Can a man stop a bullet between his teeth, or is it merely a trick? And what if a man turned his stomach into a womb that unleashed marvels into the world? He could breathe fire like a dragon. He could disgorge all manner of living creatures. And the rest of us would refuse to believe that our eyes were telling us. But this is not only magic, it is the spectacle of the real. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy night. What do yeah. you think is so incredible about this one? I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this one. It's, it's also in the tradition of good books, of course. But Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. But it's... It, it's the combination of everything, and you can go through it frame by frame. It's the attention to detail. And again, every frame, every line, every pixel is in service of achieving an emotion, a transition, a story point, a story beat. It, it's, it, it all adds up to each other. And that's, that's sort of this perfect in sync machine that during the process it can suddenly be like it can get messy and this, but there's always sort of getting the heads together and, and, and having a clear goal of pushing and pushing and pushing and can we make it better? And you can you can frame every frame of this film uh, and put it on the wall. And true. It's, it's yeah, like every 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 frame is an illustration on its, its own. It's completely ridiculous. And also how on the one hand it feels like one cohesive style and one cohesive universe, but at the same time if you go through it, there's moments moments of sort of, oh this is absolute graphic design and here how they play with shapes and suddenly this is organic and you get refer references to classical art and, and, and movie references and and uh, magic references. And it's it it's a complete feels like a complete mashup, but at the same time it still feels cohesive. Yeah. And that's one of the beautiful things also about Buck and, and, and the culture we, we are trying to pr protect, basically create and protect, is on the one hand, having everyone collaborate. And there's always a lot of people who say, um, no, you can't have too many people involved. Or what about authorship? And it's like, oh, you, you want to see the hand of the artist or you want to see this and it needs to be one person in charge. This feels so artistic and such an expression of, of, of quality and, and, and everything about it. And there's a lot of people who worked on this and a lot of different types of artists. So it's, it's the example of, no, you can still, I actually think, more minds and collaborating together and no egos or no one doing that can, can benefit a project even more. Yeah, what I also like so much about this is like the fun for animation. This is like why this is, fans. This is why animation yeah. is <laughs> such a suitable technique. But it's, it's it's kind of poetic storytelling. You only have like sixty seconds or something like that. Yeah. So what can we do in sixty seconds? A lot. <laughs> and and that that's that's what I like. So it's it's a trip. It's yeah. like it's a journey of sixty seconds that brings you to the whole it's universe of, of David Blaine in a, it's in a beautiful absolutely way. Absolutely insane. Also, an incredible voiceover by Christopher Walken, which helps a lot. It adds to the magic too of it. And a great soundtrack by Anne Food. Incredible soundtrack by yeah. Anne Food. And starting off with a Roald Dahl quote always helps also. But the um, and then we've had it all. <laughs> but the and blue is always a nice color to add to an animation. <laughs> but the um, no, it's the you see that it's created by people who have fun in what they do, who enjoy what they they do and it's animators and artists who are sort of calling the shots in this film and you see that because there's so much stuff in there that do we have to do it this way it's gonna take this much longer it's like yeah we're gonna have to do it this way it's sort of you see yeah, yeah, that yeah. every pixel every frame is, is is that yeah I don't know the English word for it uh, or the saying of it but it's like they, they didn't take it easy they didn't no. take it easy on themselves right no. and that, that's also the quality that shines through right yeah. they say okay you can tell this in thousands different ways I think if you give it to Hundred yeah. studios that make hundred different things, yeah. but actually showing your your quality actually in sixty yeah. seconds in the best possible way, yeah, that that's actually the yeah the, 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 that's their goal always, right? And it it really becomes this sort of magnificent beast, like all of it together. You see it in the in the iMac and the Pro film also is like okay, how we can can we combine I don't know how many styles in one film and have everyone talking about uh, artists and people involved in a project feeling invested in it will give them an opportunity to influence directly how it looks and what's going to happen. Yeah. We like 
that's something also like talking about collaboration. Um, years ago, we did the titles together for the Playgrounds Festival yeah, yeah, for the 10-year yeah, 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 anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. And then also our idea was, to sort of, okay, let's get 10 Dutch artists or, or studios together yeah. to make something. And it also, I was very excited that we went that route because I could suddenly work with people who are like competition and build friendships out of that. And so it's like, this is cool. We can, and we, we learn from together. each other and we can work together. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and everybody incredible. has their own approach to it. That's yeah. also a nice thing. So yeah. you're, you're maybe competitors, but you also have different stories to tell. Yeah. And I learned a lot. It was, was really, really, it was nice. incredibly fun. We're gonna what we're gonna we're gonna put it back online so that we can we fun. can check it out. Uh, if people are watching this playgrounds TV, we will uh, post it as well so that they can rewatch it. Um, just another one. Uh, we're gonna There's watch another one. Another one. Yes. Is, is this the Apple one? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Even the logo animation, like just going nuts and all the frames on the logo animations. Madness, I tell you, madness. <laughs> yeah, and what I also like is the multidisciplinary uh, yeah. uh, effort of this. So there is no style specific. It's no. 2D, it's 3D, it looks really graphical. It can be really CG look and artificial, and it can be really authentic and handcrafted. It all comes together in that yeah. same universe. So it's, yeah, it's inspiring stuff. Um, yeah, I want to go to an, another uh, episode. Um, this oh, yeah. Oh, this is fun. So in the middle is um, Chris Markland. He's our ACD in Amsterdam. And on the right is Richard Gray. He's our CD here in Amsterdam. I see, like, uh, uh, in the work, of course, we already discussed the, 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 the handmade, the C uh, CGI, the, the 2D, but I also see a lot of experiments now with new technology. Yeah. Uh, is that Absolutely. something that we can expect more in the future, how Absolutely. to embed that? Yeah. Um, no, th this in particular, it sort of spawned, we did uh, almost all the face filters for like a year or two years for Instagram. Um, and collaborated with them developing the software and the technology. and. It spawned our creative technology team and department, and and now more and more we're playing with with anything we can get our hands on. Um, also, our own devices. If you know the Instagram page, uh, Buck You Back, we actually built a machine which is in the LA studio, which is sort of the thing you see on the Instagram account, sort of touching the um, uh, iPads and liking Instagram posts. It's anything we can get our hands on to experiment with, to play around with, and new technology is hugely inspiring. Like not only on the side of um, process and sort of trying out different things and how different things look, but also the whole experience and the immersive experience of it, and making people in the audience part of your art. See, uh, see uh, the, the, the advertising companies, but also the demand, is it more going towards social media and new smartphone devices? So there's a different canvas now also yeah. uh, added to it, uh, because now a lot was done already for just screen-based, yeah. but you more and more see also like the emb em uh, embedding it in different canvases and technologies. Absolutely. No, we do do a lot of different things. So uh, d d both for screens and AR, uh, uh, ER, or VR, XR um, in that sense, but even um, 
embedding it in software, embedding it at user interfaces, uh, building user interfaces, uh, anything. There's motion and design and, and everything needs to look good. So we can help out with anything. We can watch another one that is also using this technology. Slap. Stick. Slap. Stick. Slap. Stick. Slap. 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 Stick. Stick. Slap. Stick. Slap. 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 Stick. 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 Slap. Slap. Stick. Stick. <laughs> that sort of spawned out of the work for Instagram and uh, we built our own app. So that is completely built by Buck, and sticker packs are designed by all of our designers across the studios. Um, just sort of t seeing where we could take that technology and, and have an outlet for our art and for our designers to sort of have fun and uh, animators, everyone. Everybody can be a creative yeah. with, 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 with the work of Buck. If they finish it. <laughs> if, as, if, <laughs> as long as you finish as it. As long as you finish it. Yeah. Hey, I also stumbled upon this, which I thought was also an interesting one. It's uh, what you did for uh, Oculus. That's a different cup of coffee, yeah. so, but the whole campaign, so the different sets, the whole look the, the and whole feel, the whole campaign, the building was like designed. Yeah, we, so this is actually, this touches upon something, because we as a company love to do a lot of different types of things. And when I was sort of going through uh, like 2019, thinking about uh, what kind of company I would want to run and, and getting into that conversation with Ryan, there was one thing that I sort of, a thought exercise that I started doing with myself is like I don't want to look at the industry or the types of clients or like what is outside I want to see what is inside the company and what can I what can I do with that so instead of looking for a market that you want to enter or oh I want to work in advertising so then it needs to be with these agencies or whatever um, is see what kind of people do I like and artistically what kind of getting that together, because that was always the part I enjoyed the most, the process and working with those people within studios. So I sort of tried in my head to flip it around. Is So, okay, let's not look at clients or anything like that, but let's look inside the company. And we have designers, we have animators, we have developers, we have creative directors, any different type of creative person. And then if you take it out of that sort of, we are in this industry, you can do anything together. So you can build installations, you can create new technologies, you can develop games, you can develop series, your own short films, your own stories, commercials, you can start a gallery, you can do a fashion line, a t-shirt series, you can be a publisher, because you can do that with all those people in one studio. And when I sort of had that thought, I had a conversation with Ryan, It's like, that's how we were th thinking about it too. It's like, again, it was sort of one of those little hit points, and it's... It, it's, that's how we look at the company. It's very much to what kind of incredibly cool thing can we do with all these people and have fun with it and make it incredibly well. And it ends up to be a lot, an app. We can do games, we can do anything. And, and there's more coming. There's more new things coming from back in the future. So it's, it's incredibly exciting. But that also makes every conversation about Buck difficult sometimes because we do so many things and we enjoy so many things. And we don't like, but we don't do it in a way of like it's a factory or it's a big or it's all about full service or 360 or all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very much about the process and getting the right people connected to the right project, the right opportunity. And that's 
an insane amount of fun. And sometimes an app comes out of that, and sometimes a film comes out of that, and sometimes a game comes out of that. All right. Looking forward to see a lot of new projects in the future by, uh, by Book Amsterdam. Thank you. We wish you the very best, Thanks. and uh, hopefully you come back once again at Playgrounds TV showing you all the great stuff you've made. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> of, of thank you for being here with I've us. I've been watching and you for an hour. Yeah, later. watching. From now on, <laughs> you're going to watch every episode. And I want to thank you all, uh, people uh, at our Playgrounds TV platform, for watching us again. I hope to see you next time in a few, uh, two weeks. Every two weeks, there's a new episode of Playgrounds TV. See you then. Same time, same place. See you. Bye-bye. Nice.